So I want to pick up where we left off last week. Uh, I was working on a couple of, fixing a couple of issues, using them as an example to show you the workflow for working on GitHub. And I want to continue to fix issues throughout the course and just show you the kinds of things that happen and discuss how to deal with them and some strategies for trying to uh, make your way through different open source projects. So the first one that we did was this in the shoulders repo. And the idea was to add a new, basically to add the ability to include a list of labels when you're doing a search for um, bugs and dependencies in a project. And so I submitted this I submitted this change and I waited to see what would happen. And so the maintainer came back, you know, this is fantastic. Thanks so much for taking the time to put this together and merging now and I'll publish an update. And the, um, the branch was merged and then a new release was put out and it was, uh, he was nice enough to, you know, give me a shout out on Twitter, which is really great. So, you know, contributing to this project has been a positive experience. I've enjoyed working on it. I, um, you know, again, a very small project, but it has been easy to work with the code, easy to work with the community. In this case, the community is, it looks like it's just one person and it, it's gone well. So, you know, once you've started to, to make uh, some contributions to a project, the first contribution is hard because you're learning your way around. You're trying to figure out how the code works, where everything is, what the style of how they want things done. And then, it becomes easier to do more of them. So one of the things that I found is that while I was working on this project and testing things out, I found a bug. And so the bug that I found was I was testing my, uh, my change. And I noticed that sometimes what it would do is it would print out undefined instead of the name of a NPM package. And so I had all these weird undefined, 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 uh package names and it just it looked terrible and i thought maybe i should try and fix this so i did some research and i found that there are some uh node modules that don't include a name which is not something i've seen before but like here's an example of a module uh, package.json module definition and all it has is an entry point like this is the main entry point and so um, I wrote a little, I wrote a little script, little bash script to go and try and find examples of where this happened because I couldn't understand. Obviously there was, uh, you know, there were repos that were doing this, but I needed to figure out what was going on. And I, um, I found that for example, the date functions repository had a whole bunch like this where they didn't have a name. And so I decided to file an issue because I wasn't sure how the maintainer would like this fixed. And I left uh, at the end of my issue, I said, you know, if we don't have the name of the project, maybe we should just print the path to the file. And so I, I waited for a couple of days and, and he didn't reply. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna send a pull request. So I sent a pull request to the project to fix this issue. Now I wanna talk about when you're doing this, how you should go about doing it. So the first thing that I want you to notice is at the start of my issue, I put in this line here and I say that this fixes number three. So number three is the issue number that I want to address. So there's an issue that's been filed. I wanna fix that issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell GitHub that this issue is linked, sorry, this pull request is linked to this issue. And you can see that GitHub has um, identified that there's a linkage between these two. And so this is a thing you can do. It's not obvious when you're, um, when you're starting out that you would need to do this, but this is a very common pattern, fixes or closes or there's a whole bunch of different auto like words that will do this, but look at the style, fixes number three. That's what you wanna write somewhere in here. And then what I do is I add a, bun of, a bunch of information about what my change does. I explain myself, I explain um, that I'm, I'm gonna use the, the path to the file name as opposed to the missing name field. 
and I also give some indication of how to test it. So this is a this is another really important thing that you should do. When you're sending a pull request and you've spent a lot of time fixing a bug and you want someone to review it, a really good idea is for you to say to the maintainer or the person who's gonna be reviewing this, okay, here's my change. I did this and this and this. Ex explain what you did and then say, here's how to test it. So that the person who wants to decide how this code should, you know, should we take this code? Should we do what you've done here? They don't have to work too hard. So in my case, a really simple way to test this is to install that date functions package and then to run the shoulders command. And what you'll see, you'll see all of the undefines that would come up. But with my change, instead, what you're going to see is you're going to see a full path name that comes up instead. So, you know, there's some indication of what should happen. So I put this up and you know, days go by and I didn't hear anything. And so this is another thing that I want to call out to you. I want to call out timing. So with a lot of open source projects, people are doing it as their job and you could hear from them really quickly. Other people like I, this is not, this is not his job. This is a, you know, a thing that he's done on the side and he's probably got another job he's really busy with. So somebody comes along and they send a pull request or they file an issue. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, I mean, it could be years. I've even seen some issues this, just in the past few weeks, I saw an issue that was over 20 years old get closed in Mozilla. So I'm not suggesting that you need to wait 20 years for your, um, for your, your PR to get reviewed. But I do wanna call out timing that not everybody is working on the same time, time scale. People are busy, people are doing it as a volunteer thing, people are doing it as their job, they have to ship something else. So be patient, you know, if something doesn't get doesn't happen right away, that's okay. So he comes back and he says, you know what, apologies, I didn't see this, thanks again. I've merged and I've released a new version of, of the issue. So that's great. That change has now gone in. So now I've now been able to contribute to that project twice, once to um, add a feature, wants to fix a bug. And I, I feel like I know the code pretty well. At this point, I could add lots of other things. I may not uh, contribute again because um, it does what I want, but I feel pretty confident. I understand the code, I understand what's going on, and I could, I could become a more active participant in this project if I wanted to. I've had a really good experience working with their community. You know, it feels good to my work. I feel it feels like it's appreciated. So like you can you can decide, do I want to put more energy into a particular project, partly based on am I getting somewhere? Am I am I making a difference? And also is what I'm doing, is it being well received? OK, so then let's talk about this second one. So this was another pull request that I made, and this was. Um, a change to the Fastify open source um, project. And it was in one of the smaller testing repositories, Light My Request. And I put up a change to um, add a deprecation from connection to socket. So I wanted to add a socket property. And as you'll recall, a lot has happened on this issue since the last time we checked in on it. So the first thing that happened to me was I got a uh, request to add a test. And so I had to add a test case to this. Very, very common that you're not only gonna be, a, you're not only gonna be fixing something, but you're gonna be asked to prove that it works. And you're gonna ask, be asked to write a test. So we're gonna, we're gonna get into this a lot more and more. The next thing that happened was there was quite a long discussion about what the appropriate way to solve this was. I think some of this had already been done when I was doing my last video. So, you know, um, we need some kind of a deprecation here and we need to follow the upstream deprecation cycle. So we need to follow what Node does. Um, other people talking about you could do this in TypeScript, you know, we could do this. Uh, differences of opinions about the right way to do this. So one thing we could do is you could define a property and do this in the property. And so I took this and basically copied and pasted and I went really quickly and I missed this comment. I wasn't reading carefully enough. So um, 
this comment was basically a note to me saying we need to, you know, if the if the version of node is greater than or equal to 13, we need to emit a warning and then a link to this other repository that I hadn't seen before. And there was, you know, plus one, yes, let's do it this way. So I sent up uh, my PR and, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. Let me know if I've done it incorrectly, if there are things that I can I should consider. So, the, so this uh, starts a, a discussion. And so the, one of the reviewers comes back and says, you know, the comment here is not sufficient. You need to do an actual test against process.version and along with a warning that's gonna be issued through the interface that Fastify warning provides. Okay, so what I want you to see here is, I went really quickly, I put up some code, the code that I put up is wrong. And what happened to me? So a lot of you, you're, you're going into open source projects and you're feeling nervous about, okay, someone's gonna be reading my code and what if I screw up? you feel like, okay, maybe I'm not good enough to do this. Maybe, um, maybe you know, I, I don't have the confidence to do this. What's gonna happen if I make a mistake? So I want you to see what happens when you make a mistake. Nobody is yelling at me here. Nobody says, get out of here, you don't belong. Nobody says, uh, you're an idiot. How could you make such a stupid mistake? To be honest with you, I feel a bit embarrassed. Like I should have spent more time reading this but I was trying to go fast, trying to do it for my video, trying to get it up. I got a million other things going on and I just took a shortcut and this is where I end up. So what's great about this is I have some pointers. So the comment here says you need to do a test against process.version and um, you need to do a warning with Fastify, uh, Fastify uh, warning. So I've got some clues that can help me. And what's great about this is that now I have a little bit more that I could go and I could search for. So this uh, process.version, if you go into node and assuming my computer responds, there we go. If I said uh, process, Process is this object that has a whole API on it, a whole bunch of things in here, various functions and different things that I could use. And if I said process.version, I get back a string that looks like this, version 12.18.4, which is cool. And I also noticed because I was doing some research, so I, I had node process version so here's the documentation for dot version here. And it talks about how this uh, version, you know, like what it does, how people use it. But I also noticed while I was doing this, something that I'd never seen before, which is process.versions. And this thing has been around since uh, node, well, it's been around for a long time, um, but I have never used it before. And so if you do process, dot versions, like so. We get a whole bunch of different versions. So the version of Node, the version of V8, the version of all kinds of other libraries that are being used, OpenSSL, the Unicode version, all kinds of things in here. So this is really cool. So we have a way to check for the particular version that we're supposed to use. And what, what this is saying here is it's saying, if somebody accesses the connection property, and if their version of node is greater than or equal to node 13, then we need to emit a warning. So I looked around and um, given, given this piece of information here, we can do some interesting searches. So one of the things that's really great, so if I go out, for example, when you're working on an open source project, so I'm working on this Fastify project, it has 87 different repos here uh, I can't highlight it, but 87 different repositories. So when you're working on a bigger project, one way to look at a bigger project is, okay, I'm intimidated because there's so much code here and I don't know what any of this code does. And that's valid. I understand that. Another way to look at a big project is there are tons and tons of examples that I can go and read, that I can search for. So if I wanna do something in this code, probably somebody else has already done something similar. So if I was to do a search um, for process 
dot version inside of this organization in code. I can see lots of places where they're working with process and I can see, here's an example right here where they use process.version and they, um, they're checking out what the major version of Node is. So that's one way to do it. And then I see another version right here, which is using this Semver package semver.less than process versions.node 13.3.0. So that's interesting. So if we look at um, semver, so here's the semver package. Uh, semver has all kinds of interesting methods for checking if versions are greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, if, if, if a certain version satisfies some range. And I'm looking for like uh, greater than or equal to. So it looks like there's one here. So here's in the comparison section, it looks like you can do greater than or equal to like so sem version dot gte version one version two so that could be really interesting and so here you can see an example of code that does essentially what i need to do uh, with respect to um, checking a version so this is this is perfect this is what i'm, I'm going to remember this and now let's look at what other thing was mentioned in here so the other piece of info in here was that i need to do a warning and I need to use Fastify warning. And this is the second time that I've been told about Fastify warning. This, this is a bug that I wish could be fixed there. If I go to Fastify warning, which I've never used before. So this is a small utility used by Fastify itself for generating consistent warning objects across your code base and plugins. It also exposes a utility for omitting those warnings and guaranteed that they're issued only once. So this is really good. And I think this is why they want me to use it because if I'm going to mention that something has been deprecated, I don't wanna spam the terminal one, two, three, four. I don't wanna do it a hundred times. I'd like to have the warning happen once and then never happen again. And I could obviously write my own code to do that, have a variable, set it to false, and then the first time that I print out this log message, set it to true, but they already have a mechanism for doing this. And so if we read deeper into this, now another thing that I want you to notice about what I'm doing right now, I'm going to an open source project, I need to know how to use it. So I am hungry for good documentation on how to use it. So the first thing I care about is what is this thing? What is the purpose of it? So when you're writing a readme, you wanna think about really quickly getting to the point. What is this for? Why would I choose it? When do I need it? How, the next question is, how do I install it? Here's the information I need to install it. Now it's installed in my project, I can use it. Then how do I use it? Well, the module exports a builder function that returns a utility for creating warnings and, and emitting them. So I need a line that looks like this. I need to create a warning. And then it has a method so it talks about the create method. The create method takes three arguments, a name, a code, and a message. So if we look at these, this is the error name. You can access it later with error.name for consistency. We recommend to prefix the plugin error names with fastify warning and then your plugin name. Okay, so that's interesting. So then it says the code this is the warning code and you can access it with error.code. For consistency, we recommend to prefix this code with FST underscore your plugin name underscore and then whatever you're gonna do. So this is really helpful to me because obviously this is what they want. So I'm gonna try and follow their standards. And then a message, the warning message um, that you can put um, when, you know, when this thing is emitted. So then they have some examples down here. So here's an example. Um, they create the warning, warning, then they set up this warning calling create, and then they emit the warning. And so they're calling the, they're emitting the warning based on the error code. So I'm going to need to do something that looks, um, 
I'm gonna to need to do something that looks like this. And I'm also interested in, um, uh, I did another search. I'm interested to see places where they've done deprecations. So again, I'm interested to learn before I do my code changes, can I look at the rest of the code that they've written and can I understand how they how do they do what they do? So you'll you'll hear me say, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I am in Fastify. I want to do things the way that they would do them. So I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to be innovative. I'm trying to do things that are going to be appropriate to the code that I'm in. So if we take a look here, you can see that Fastify itself has a bunch of warnings. So here's a file. It has a bunch of warnings and they've already created, um, they've already created these warnings. They do it in a separate file, which is interesting. So that may be what they want me to do too. Um, I don't know. So, but I noticed that when they create it, they say fastify deprecation. So this is something that we could, we could probably do because over here it says when you're naming your um, for consistency, we recommend that your plugin do Fastify warning and then your plugin name. So then they do a code, FST de uh, deprecation 001, and then they have an error message um, like so. So this is perfect. We can use this as a guide because we're basically doing something very similar here. Um, Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so let's let's try and do a fix based on what we've just seen here. So what I'm gonna do, let me switch over and let's go back to our code. So our code currently looks like this. We've got our socket property here. We've replaced connection with socket. We've defined this new connection property and we need to solve this problem right here. So before I can do anything else, I need to install these other dependencies. So in package.json, I need to npm install and I need to save a couple of new dependencies. So I need some new dependencies to go in here. So I'm gonna save fastify warning and I'm also gonna save uh, semver. And I'll be able to use these in the other parts of my code. Okay, so there we go. So these are now in. So Fastify warning is here, Semver is here, and they've been added to the dependency list. So back over here, what I'm gonna need to do is um, I'm gonna pull in Semver like so. And I also need to pull in um, fastify warning. And I think looking back at their code that you have to call, a like you import a function and then you execute the function. So that's what we'll do too. We'll pull this in and we'll do this. And so what I need to do down in our uh, property here, it says if the node major version is greater than 13. So what I wanna do here is I wanna say um, if the, if semver dot, and again, we're gonna use the greater than equal to. So I'm gonna say if it's greater than or equal to, and then I'm gonna say, um, process dot versions dot node. So this is what we saw. Where was it? Um, here. If the sem version is greater than or equal to process dot versions dot node, and then I'm going to say um, 13 dot zero dot zero. Now, if we look at, uh, let's go to the docs here for node HTTP 
request. So the dot connection, so here's connection. Connection has been deprecated since version 13.0.0. So I wanna say the same, if it's greater, so if you're in a version that's greater than 13.0.0, then what we need to do is we need to do our warning. So in order to do the warning, we have to create our warning. Now I'm not 100% sure whether I should put my warning in a separate file or if I should put it in this file. I'm gonna put it in this file for now and I'm gonna ask them what they want. So over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna use theirs as a guide. So let's see if we can figure out how we should do this. Let's look at what other plugins do. So Fastify, Deprecation, there's an example. Fastify, Deprecation. Uh, now this is interesting. They reference the plugins guide. So, and the plugins guide seems to talk about this. So this is another thing that would be interesting for me to do would be, um, Let's see, I think I have a link to this. So let's take a look at their documentation on emitting custom errors. So emitting errors, if you want to deprecate an API or you want to, uh, the, to warn the user about a specific use case, use the warning module. So pull in the warning, create a uh, deprecation, give an error code and a message. So they're saying fastify deprecation, so I'll do the same. So I'm gonna say FST. Now, what did they say about uh, doing our codes? It said the warning code, um, for consistency, we recommend you prefix it with the, uh, to prefix plugin error codes with FST, your plugin name. So we could say um, here, we could say FST uh, light, my request deprecation 01. We could try and do something like that. Um, and up here it says for consistency, try adding your plugin name on the end. Fastify deprecation, light my request. FST, light my request, deprecation 01. Now their message looks like this. You're accessing the Node.js core request object via request.request, .request, use request.raw. Uh, so we could rewrite this a little bit. You are um, accessing, you're accessing request.connection use request.socket instead. You're accessing request.connection, use request.socket instead. Okay, we could try this. Now I'm gonna put a comment in here and I'm gonna link to this deprecation so that people that are looking at this code in the future could find out what's going on here. Um, So they would have information on it. So I need to copy this and let's use it down here because the Fastify warning, where is it? Here, I have to emit the warning using the error code. Okay, so down here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say warning.emit and then I'm gonna paste in my error code like so. And so, um, if the node major is greater than or equal to 13, warn, uh, I don't know if I, like, I don't think this is necessary. This comment is necessarily achieving anything. 
So I'm going to uh, save that. And okay, so now we could test this. All right. So in order to test this, I have two scenarios that I need to deal with. Node says that the request.connection is deprecated since version 13.0.0. So that means I need to test this in 13.0.0 or above, and I need to test this in less than 13.0.0. So there's a really cool um, tool that you can get for um, switching between different versions of Node. I don't know if they have a better website than this or not. I don't think so. So NVM, the way that it works, this is a difficult README to show you quickly. Uh, so I'll, I won't show you this way, I'll show it to you here. So what you can do with NVM is you can say NVM and you can say, I wanna use version 13 or I wanna use 13.0.2, I wanna be very specific. So let's say I'm gonna do NVM use 13 and it comes back and it says, okay, we're now using version 13.14, or I could say MVM use 12. And what it's doing is it's switching between all these different versions. So MVM allows me to quickly go back and forth between these different versions. And I think um, that you can do this on Windows too. It's called MVM Windows. And, um, For switching between uh, for switching between the different versions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with okay. So I'm on version 12 right now, so I'm less than 13. So I'm going to run the tests npm test, and what I expect is I expect that I should not get a warning. I have a test that I had to write, which this test uses connection. And you can see that I did not get a warning over here. So that is good. So my test ran, I, I reached in and got the connection. The connection is there, it works. Um, so that's all good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do MVM use 13. I'm gonna switch to a later version of Node and I'm gonna do NPM test a second time. This time I should see a warning. Okay, now this time I got an error. Um, and it's upset at me because it says that my error code doesn't exist. So I obviously screwed something up. So let's figure out what I screwed up. FST. Okay, warning.create. This is my code. Let me make sure that I'm not, so name, code, and then string, and I've done the same. Warning.create, and then down here I'm saying, um, so these two match, like that looks good. So let's, Let's try this again. Maybe I just had a simple typo. It's npm test. One thing I do know is it's getting into this line of code. So I know that that's working. Okay, but this is still failing. Okay, I'm gonna debug this. I'll be right back. Give me one second. Okay, I I took a, a minute to figure out what's going on here. And I, I dug in, I just put a, um, I put a console log in where this fastify warning is failing and I wanted to see when it goes looking for my code inside the list of codes, this is the line where it's throwing, I wanted to understand what was in there. So I did a console log and you can see that what's in there is this right here. So what's happening is uh, it is obviously doing some kind of uppercase. Yeah, so the code gets um, turned into an uppercase code. So this is something that would actually be, um, this is a bug I might file on this repo here um, because the documentation 
doesn't mention that this needs to be all uppercase. So when I'm done here, I might actually send a, um, I might send a pull request here to fix this too, because this is, you know, this is something small, but it just, it caused me to fail my code. So let's, let's undo what I just did here and let's get this working. So I'm going to pull this out. Whoops. Um, get rid of this. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to make this all uppercase light. Whoops. Light my quest like this FST light my request deprecation one down here. I'm going to do that. Save it. Let's try again. So NPM. So this looks pretty good. So you can see that a warning came out here. So fastify deprecation, like my request, you're accessing request.connection, use request.socket instead. So the warning came up. Um, I am currently using node 13 and the warning is there. So this is, this is good. It's working exactly the way that I want it to work. So let's take a look at the changes that I've made. I'm going to do a diff and we can see the changes. So I have pulled in Semver. I have pulled in Fastify warning. And you can see down here at the bottom that I have added both of these to the package.json file. I've defined a new warning for my deprecation. And then I do a check to see if the version is greater than 13.00. And if it is, then I emit this, I emit this uh, check here. So this is really good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another commit. So if you look at what we have right now, this is where the master branch is sitting, or at least where it was sitting when I started. And you can see that I did my first pull request, add the missing socket feature. And then I had to add a test, which I did here. And now I'm going to do my third test. And so if we were to describe this, I'm going to say, um, do a proper semver test and use fastify warning. That's really what I've done here. So I'm going to say git status. And these two files are here. So I'm going to add lib request. And I'm going to add package.json. And so I have these two files um, both now ready to be committed. And I'm going to commit. And I'm going to say um, do proper semver test and use fastify warning like that for my, for my log message. And commit that, which I think is going to rerun the tests. Okay. And I'm going to push this to my origin, to my issue 87 branch. And what that's going to do over here is the number of commits will jump to three. So I don't know if you can see, but that just changed to three. So if I look in here, you'll see that I'll now have another commit, do proper semver test and use fastify warning. And so now I'm gonna go back to the conversation and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna reply back to what's happened here. And you can see that, um, you know, eight hours ago, there was a question, is there any update on this? So I'm gonna um, try and reference as much of, of what I've done or explain what I've done and ask any questions that I had. So uh, Jay Sumners, so I'm gonna say I've uh, submitted another commit, another fix, which uses um, Semver to do the check against the node version 
and fastify uh, warning to emit the deprecation warning. Thanks to J Sumners for pointing out how I should do this. Okay, and then I also want to ask a couple questions because I'm not 100% sure. Whoops, I'm not 100% sure if what I've done is what they want. So something, a couple things I wasn't sure about related to the way I named things in the warning or name things in warning.create. Specifically, so the first thing that I wondered about was um, specifically, I'm just gonna talk about the error code, uh, specifically the um, code and if there is a, um, if there is a like a standard also i noticed that in some places you do all the warnings or you create all the warnings in a single file i did it in the request file but could move it and I'll just make a note that I ran into a bug also. I ran into a small issue with naming on the code um, where I had lowercase letters for the plugin name, but everything gets converted to uppercase. I'll um, update the docs in, I'll send a PR. Okay, so um, do a preview, you know, check it out, make sure you're happy with what you've said. You can always edit these things, but And I will click on comment and send that up. So while we're here and while we're doing this, why don't we just go fix this other, this other issue just so we can go through the process really quickly. So the, the repo that I care about right now is fast is the warning repo. Uh, fastify warning this repo right here. I'm going to uh, fork it. And I'm going to clone this onto my machine. So um, whoops. I'm going to um, Check out a branch called um, README Fix. And it's such a small fix that I think I'm just going to send a pull request and not do an issue. We'll see how they feel about that. But um, I will um, take a look at the README here and see if we can improve it. So in the README, 
it says um, for code, it says the warning code, you can access it later with error.code. For consistency, we recommend to prefix plugin error codes with FST uh, your plugin name. And so then I'm going to say note um, codes should be uppercase. should be all uppercase. How about that? I'll save that and uh, get diff. I've got one change to the readme to add my line here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say git add the readme file. I'm gonna commit the readme file and I'm gonna say um, add note about um, codes needing to be uppercase to read me. And I'm going to push this branch up, git push origin read me fix. So it says here, if you want to do a pull request, you can just go directly to this URL. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go hop over here and you can see that I could also go here and do it. So people have been asking me, how do I start a pull request? If you go back to your branch, you could do it. Or if I opened up a new window and I pasted this in, it gives me, it gives me this. So in my, in my note here, um, I'm going to say this is a documentation change and um, checklist. I'm going to put in what I did. So underneath this, I'm going to say uh, while working on this fix, so I'll link to this. While working on this, I uh, stumbled on, how do I say this? I didn't stumble, but while I was working on this, um, I was confused when my uh, code wasn't found um, while, while calling um, warning.emit. Turned out that I had uh, used lowercase letters and the code has to be all uppercase. Has to be all uppercase. And then I'll just say, um, I've added a note. So that added a note to the docs so that others don't trip over this. So this is what my PR is going to look like. And um, let's just take a look at the fix itself. So the fix itself is down here. You can see that it shows that I'm changing this line. And um, here, I've got this in here that it has to be all uppercase. OK, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to submit this, create this pull request. So now this pull request is here and um, pull request is here and um, if we go back over to the PR that I was working on, this is 89, you'll see down here, uh, my comment is here. And you can also see that because I referenced that pull request, because I referenced that pull request in the other repo, um, it shows it here as well. So we'll see what they say to this. And I want you to, you can see that since I've been away, all 10 of my checks have passed. So you can see that all of these different automated builds of the code have passed, which is good. 
And for each one of these, um, like if I look at version um, 14, for example, here's node version 14. In the tests, we should be able to see, you can see that when my tests run, um, it gives me the deprecation right here. So that's good. And um, it's doing exactly what I would expect it to do. The other ones, like if I look at the earlier ones, we wouldn't have that. So this is good. So I will see what they say, but you can see that this has been a much more complex one to do, like five different people in here, different people giving me advice, lots of different reviews. They're pretty quick to respond. So it wouldn't surprise me if as soon as I click stop on this video, I have another email saying, fix this, fix this, fix this. But we'll just keep working our way through this until we get this uh, this fix approved. Anyway, I'm going to pause it there, and um, we'll return to this in follow-ups.